communion ever recorded was by Abraham. He had just fought and got all of his stuff back for, for five different kings. And they said, listen, we're going we're gonna to give you whatever you want. Right? And he turned from them and turned to Melchizedek, put his hand in the air, which is the covenant sign. I am in covenant with God. I will not take a shoelace from you. What is he saying? I am in covenant with God. Remember, that's what we did. That's what we did last week, or the last time I was here. We, we were in covenant with the eternal, sovereign, Holy Father. We're in covenant through the Holy Blood and the blood in the, in the body. We're so united to the eternal that we don't even grasp the, the unity that we have. But, interesting, Abraham tithed all to Melchizedek and then took the blood in the body took the bread and the wine. Tithing is a covenant, right? Yes. And it breaks open certain words in the scriptures that you can't have without it. If you are a tither, your authority is, God has opened the windows of heaven upon me. Stop praying God open the windows. Stop praying that. You're doing yourself damage. Why? Because you're already tithing. 
And that puts it into the present. Not He says, if you will tithe, well, I am tithing. Then I am opening the windows of heaven. I rebuke the devourer. And you can't steal my harvest. Why? Because the widows of heaven, because God's word, God said so. And so that's what we do. You say it the way it is in your particular. Now, if you're not tithing, you can make a deal right now. How many? (laughs) You can say, okay, I'll start tithing. Then you can use it. But if you're not tithing and you don't want to tithe, you can't use that scripture. And neither can you use given, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken, again, and running over. You're cutting out a lot of things. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Can't use them. They're obsolete to you. Just like if you... Malachi. Hi. <laughs> Put Malachi in the air. He's one of the new members. Yeah. He's in his first communion. He's having his first communion. And I'm going to explain all. I'm going to explain this a little bit better as as we go along. But I want to do this now. Uh, we'll get it out of the way. Uh, out of the way. Out of the way. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get this. This is a. a, a liqueur. Anyway, we do it every month exactly the same. Let's get it out of the way. Okay. Now, if it was different every month. I would think, hmm, now what should we do? Well, let's get this out of the way because I know where I want to go. And God wants us to go. Let me put it this way. I know where God wants to take us because there's some, there's some things that we need. You can't get it all into one service. You can't get it all into one preaching. I, I, unless I talk to you over and over and over again about the actually the same principle, you can't get it. Because it's by osmosis. It's by putting the seed in and then watering that same seed and then putting the seed in and watering it again so that you get to the next level in Christianity or in Christ or in your experience with God and in your person. And the more you get in your person, the more authority you carry on the earth. Your authority is directly related to what you believe. And what you can see that God has done for you, right? So God has already opened the windows of of heaven on you. Jesus has made a covenant with his father. Uh, Loretta, put up Hebrews uh, 6.13, I think it is, that we have. And uh, this is, uh, and it it all comes out of Abraham, too. Uh, it, It says, and then when God made promise to Abraham, he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Do you know what that means? God cut covenant with himself. He didn't cut covenant with Abraham. If you notice, Abraham didn't pass through the covenant pieces. It was smoke and fire that passed through. Abraham was what? The witness of the covenant. Jesus and the Father cut covenant through his holy blood, and he says, now you're a witness. And then he says, the other one that was a witness, he says, I will send the Holy Spirit, and he'll be a witness with you of my resurrection, of my covenant. So us and the Holy Spirit work in tandem as witnesses and administrators of the resurrected covenant of Christ through his blood. But you cannot hurt the covenant because it wasn't cut with you. It was cut with Christ. It's already permanently sealed. It's already permanently done. Say, well, what about our failures? Put them aside. Did you, did you, want, to, did you want to sin or did you want to fail? No, I, got, I, I didn't. Well, thank God. Get, get straightened out. You got, it takes 30 seconds. Now, if you want to keep it, it takes a little longer. 
right? If you're dealing with it and have been dealing with it and have been dealing with it and have been dealing with it, you still get, you still get freedom. But God's dealing with you. Somewhere along the line, you're going to break that thing off your life. And will that make you more righteous? What? I will be more righteous if I'm new. You won't be. You could not be more righteous than Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. Now, can you do a better job? Absolutely. Everybody, every one of us can do a better job. Right? And we beat ourselves up for not doing a better job. Stop doing that. We are in a permanent state of repentance. Right? Yeah, we're permanently worried about, what did I do with this? What's this? That's, that's just, that, that just keeps you in the here and the now. It keeps you in your flesh. It keeps you in your looking at your belly button and wondering, I wonder what, what, what can I do? How can I do? What's that, right? Stop it. All those things change. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you look like when you first come in. If you stay in the church long enough, all those things will be, adult, will be dealt with and addressed. And you'll just, I've seen people that just, you just wonder how they made it this far. Right? But 10 years later, you wouldn't know it was the same person. Right? Some of them came in with these religious spirits and they, they're always committing the, the sin we used to hear about. Oh, the unpardonable sin. But nobody knows what it is. But these guys, the, the religious guys always have that sin. Right? The unpardonable sin. I have the unpardonable sin, Pastor. Really? What is it? Pardon? Well, what's the unpardonable sin? I really want to teach that. I threw my Bible. <gasps> You're kidding. Right to hell for you. <laughs> See how foolish it is? Stop it. We are not permanently scarred and broken. That's ridiculous. And another thing, God didn't come for worms. So if you think you're a worm, get over yourself. You're not a worm, you're a butterfly. I don't know if that's a, if you can transpose that or whatever, but anyway, oh, no, okay, let's let's get let's let's do this. You in covenant? You got your tithe? Okay, put your hand in the air. Put your hand in the air. The windows of heaven are open. On me. on me. God opens his window. God opens his window. Every, time Every time I tithe. We rebuke the devourer. We rebuke the devourer. Get, off of our stuff. Get off of our stuff. And we thank you that the harvest cannot be stolen from us. The Through the covenant of the blood of Jesus, we take his body. Take his body. Take his body. This body that is broken for you. Hallelujah. He was separated to, from God. He was separated from the eternal father, the eternal son. Separated from the eternal father. One time and one time only. So that you could be drafted in. You cannot. Because of Christ. God is not separated from us anymore. We've been drafted in because Jesus took our separation. Yes. Broke it. He broke our betrayal. We take his body. Thank you, Jesus. You did this for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God cut covenant with himself. He could find no greater than himself, so he cut covenant with himself. When you're in covenant, the uh, greater cuts the covenant to the lesser. But God couldn't find anybody greater than himself, so he cut covenant with himself. It's the, if you go to the next one, it's the end of all disputes. Covenant is the end of all disputes. In that covenant, every issue is dealt with. Every land grab, every well, every piece of cattle, every wife, every child, everything is done. Uh, every issue that will ever arise is done and written in that covenant. 
That's, and then they have to vow to exchange their lives. The Father gave his life to Jesus, and Jesus gave his life to the Father. In order for the covenant to work, that's the only way it works. So you notice that when Jesus was on earth, he says, I must show my Father I love him. Why? He's in covenant. His life was not his own. But God the Father's life is not his own either. I speak what I hear my Father tell me. And I do what I see my Father doing. So the Father and the Son walk in tandem to the exact same purpose always. It doesn't change. And the Holy Spirit has come to witness that. Now, you say, well, what actually is in the covenant? I, I'm, I'm going to give you a scripture that you don't need any other scripture but this one. And everything is solved for you. You ready? Genesis 3, 15. I didn't give it to you, but it says this. I will put a seed in the womb of a woman. And he will crush your head. That's the covenant. <laughs> That's it. The end of the book of Revelation is the end of that prophecy. First prophecy ever prophesied was prophesied to the devil. He's looking at the devil and says, I'm going to put a seed in the womb of a woman. And that seed's going to crush your head. In Hebrew, it doesn't say he. You know what it says in Hebrew? And they. Oh, yeah. Well, see, the devil can't read. How many know that? Well, if he could read, he should have read the first three chapters before he got trapped in the third. The first chapter says, I'll put seed, on the, I'll put seed in the earth and it'll reproduce after its kind, seed after its kind, uh, uh, trees after their kind. Uh, Fish after their kind, birds after their kind. Everything I put in, everything I put life to reproduces itself. He didn't come every year and plant. He decided, I, I don't have time for that. So he says, I'll put it right in the seed. And then he prophesies, he says, well, I'm going to put a seed that reproduces itself, just like I showed you in Genesis, but you can't read. And he's going to reproduce himself on the earth. When Jesus went to the cross, it says he opened not his mouth as a lamb and a hue slain. You remember that one? You know what it, you know what it says in Hebrew? He went to the cross and didn't speak of the basket of seeds he was carrying. That basket of seeds was broken open at his crucifixion and resurrection. And the seeds of the sons of God spilled out upon the earth. In Ephesians, it says it this way. And he is resurrection is at work everywhere. At work everywhere. Now, the Bible is pretty big. Like some of you, some of you guys carry a Bible that could hurt people. You get a hernia if you had to pack it around too long. But why is it so big when it's so simple? Well, it's not all that simple because we're in obscurities. It, uh, Paul says it this way. He says, we're looking through the glass darkly. That word there in, he, in, in, in Greek is obscurity. Now, there's two ways that the obscure is there. The obscure is there to cover the truth or to stop the light, and it's called obscurity. It's, it murks the light. It twists the light so you can't see the light, right? But the other obscurity is the depth of any principal organization that has four or five different layers of authority, has different ways of doing the same thing, has hidden agendas, and that's also obscure. Now, let's go to the simplest form I can think of. You have a puzzle, and you shake it out on the table, and you're looking at that going, huh, this is the kingdom of God. Well, then you look at the picture, we know what it's supposed to look like, but we're looking at the puzzle, <laughs> and it's all shambled up and jumbled. Well, the first thing you do if you're a puzzler is you look for the straight edges. Why? Boundaries, frame, 
border. That's covenant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Jesus is really quite cool, isn't he? <laughs> it's the border. If you put this, you set the border, if you will understand the covenant that God cut with his son and that you are a part of that covenant by being incorporated into Christ, you have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead inside of you that incorporates you into that covenant. You did not cut the covenant. You'll never cut a covenant with God like that ever. But you can be a part of it by the power of resurrection. Now, the power of resurrection inside of you is your authority. Yeah. Why is it your authority? No. Because it's Christ in you who is the authority. It's the same spirit that raised Christ is in you. That's your balance, that's your balance of authority. Right? We pray always in Jesus' name. We don't pray in any other name. We don't pray in the name of the Father. We don't pray in the name of the, of the Holy Spirit. Why? They're not men. You go, what? They're not men. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth are men's. It's men. God gave it to man. Jesus became a man, gave it back to us as a man, and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the man, son of God, man, sitting in the throne of of heaven, all authority is given unto him in heaven and on earth. That's the authority of your spirit. Right? Your spirit, if you will, has power over death. Your spirit has power over sickness and disease. Your spirit cannot sin. Cannot. Why? It's the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It has already conquered sin and conquered death and conquered sickness and disease. Right? When you're feeling sick, just walk around laying hands on yourself. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens my mortal body. Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens my mortal body. If you're confused, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead quickens my mortal body. Talking in tongues at yourself, whatever. Right? What? Because that's your authority. God gave you authority. We are in authority. That authority is controlled by the covenant. Everything inside of that box has to fit inside that covenant. If it doesn't fit inside that covenant, you've got it wrong. The piece is in the wrong place. What we do and have done, because we don't understand covenant, we look it up and go, oh man, by his stripes I'm healed. I got the piece. See? And you show everybody, and you talk around. By his stripes I'm healed. I hope Jesus, yeah, Jesus, thank you. I know, I know, please. I know it's right. I know it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, no, stop doing that. It's in the covenant. You don't say, please heal me. It's your covenant. I am healed. I'm already healed. Just like the windows of heaven are open upon me already because I tithe. I don't have to beg and pray. God didn't make you uh, victims. He made you warriors in the covenant. Everything that's written that's inside of the covenant is in that picture. And we've got to stop picking it up one at a time and pick up the covenant. That all things are possible to them that believe. Believe what? That the covenant worked. Hey, it worked. The powers are broken. We're no longer in darkness. We're in light. The blood of Jesus has forgiven our sins. He has put prosperity, power, life. Everything that could have is inside of us. We're just not using it yet. Pick up the covenant. Not the pieces. <laughs> What's the next one? Throw it out. I don't even know where I am. There's one more. There's, there's some other scriptures. I forgot where I was going. Yeah, I, I do that when I'm driving too. I end up in with Duke. <laughs> it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead. That's good to know. And calls those things which are not as though they were. Oh, how do you get there? 
<laughs> How do you get there, okay? God calls those things that are not as though they actually were. How do you get there? Uh, come with me. You ready? You might need a lunch for this one. This this will take some time. Christ was crucified before the foundation of the earth. What does that mean? He cut covenant in the eternals before he ever came. The heavens are pregnant with the covenant blessings. Go to Ecclesiastes 3, 13. It filled everything that, well, you'll read it. And this is what he saw. This, this, is, what, this is what he saw. Just about. That which has been is now. That which is, has already been. And God requires them in the past. In Hebrew it says this, and God calls them into time. So everything that ever was, was already. And everything that ever will be, is already. Where? In the eternal. And God just calls them into time. What did it say? When the, when the, when the time was ripe, God, God called Christ into time. What is faith? Yeah, yeah. No. What's the what's the faith? What what do you have faith in? Hey? Things you're believing for. What is what is your faith in though? It's in God telling the truth. Right? God's not a liar. God always tells the truth. And it's the covenant that carries all those things. And you can't see it. Except for you can see it because it's, it was before the foundation of the earth. God got covenant with his son and pregnated all of the spirit world to be able to change this world. Ephesians, uh, Hebrews 3, uh, Hebrews 11, 3 says it this way. You don't have to look it up, Loretta. It says, uh, God spoke the world into existence so that the visible came out of the invisible. So he called it from the invisible and put it into the visible. That's the way that faith works. But it works because of the covenant. It works because God has made an agreement with us in covenant. He's given his life. We gave our lives. Jesus gave his life. And the covenant is what we have faith. And I have faith that God could covenant with his son and everything they agreed upon is true. Everything. Now, third from the right, the end of the covenant is the book of Revelation. And you look at that, and it's going to take place. You're not going to be able to stop it. All you need to do is try to figure out what your part of it is. Now, let, let, me, let me give you this. In the third thing, it says, it says and there was a, 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 de a devil released out of hell, and he's going to burn a third of the earth. Now, can the devil go ahead and burn a third of the earth? He's not allowed to play with matches, first of all. He does not have authority on the earth. Because God gave the earth to man. Good man and bad man, it's still in man's control. And in certain sovereignties, if you will, the delegated sovereignty of God is put onto man to be on the earth and to control the earth. That's the sovereignty of your authority as a man. But the devil can't just start fires. Glory? He uses men to start. That's why we have so many fires. Everything you see that's spiritual, remember, it has to be carried out through men and women, human beings, because we have the authority. 
They're not our enemies. The devil's our enemy. But we, but we have authority. And there's, gonna be, there's times now, and the end of this, is, it, it, it says this. It says, don't write that down because that's the time we will prophesy to nations. Why? Sons of God manifest will have the authority over nations. Revelations 2 says it this way. If you persevere, I'll give you authority over nations. Persevere in what? In the fulfillment of covenant. In the fulfillment of covenant. Our purpose, our job, our cause. It's just like Jesus. He, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Right? I don't think you're going to be able to vote in the right people. I think you are going to have to conquer them by the kingdom and that the kingdom will take over the governments. Let me, let me give you a, an illustration of that. If it has been created, it does not have any, any redemptive power to save. Did you hear that? If it, hit, if it has been created... It does not have any redemptive powers to save. The salvation of man came from the sovereign eternal father and his son. And it's the eternal blood. And it's the eternal word. Did you know that everything you wrote, you wrote, you read, was first written in heaven and then showed to somebody? You remember John, he's a book of Revelation, says this. He says, write in a scroll what you see. And we got the book of Revelations. Well, that's the way the word comes. Men were moved by God to show them the eternal and what God wanted in the earth. And so he wrote it down. And uh, that's how we get it. Right? Our, our, my, my job, my issue for you is that stop trying to figure it out with your natural mind and Pick the eternal answers that are present in your Bible. We get stuck by trying to be like everybody else. And, now, and that, that doesn't mean you just like find a hole and pray till you're dead. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. I'm talking about your, your thought structures and the way that you think, the instincts that you are. Um, for example, let me let me give you this. Uh, offense. In the last in the last days, the angel will come and take out of the church everything that is offensive, everything that causes offense. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty scary. Everything that causes offense is going to be taken out of the church, and you kind of go, ooh. I wonder if I die. All of a sudden, our, our sin nature takes over. Yeah, that's probably you. Yeah, <laughs> unforgivable sin, offense. Um, offense? How many have ever seen a, a, a beaver trap or a mouse trap where they pull it open and there's that little pin that goes over to a, a jaw or a jar? And if you step on that, the pin releases and you're trapped, right? Do you know what offense is? No. It's the pin. Offense is there so that you react carnally in any situation. Well, no, that's what offense is for. You don't have to, but that's what offense is for. Okay? Now, you don't have to. If you, act, if you, if you react by, by spiritual understandings, you, you can't be offended. Offense has no authority over you. But if he can trick you by offense... To act carnally, he's got you in his kingdom. And it won't work. Just like the, regi the regimentations of our world will no longer work. It, it, in here. It, it, says, it says we go up into the mountain and it's dark and moody and cloudy and, and there's no be able to see. All of those things are a form of obs obscurity to stop you from finding the truth. The obscurities are there so that you cannot feel and move in the Spirit of God who is your direct guide to the covenant. 
Now, if you have a gift and you know we're gifting and you know certain things, uh, the only thing that's going to enhance what is inside of you is the knowledge of the Word of God. It says the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Every gift that you have will be enhanced and strengthened by the more you understand God's Word. It's your ammunition and pipe. And, and you can start off, you'll have the same gift your whole life. But by the time you get to the end, it'll be so powerful because of the word that you carry. The gift is there. When you're, it's, an, it's eternal. It's your voice. Right? Hallelujah. Tomato. Okay, let's go to... Let's go to Peter, and uh, we'll, let's go to Ro to Peter first. Second Peter, two. Uh, well, Second Peter one four. I want to show you some. Th I want to show you two more things, and then we'll uh, take another offering. <laughs> you think I'm I'm serious? <laughs> I'm just warning you. Just warming you up. Whereby I given to us exceeding great and precious promises that we might be partakers of what? Divine of what? Divine Is the divine nature uh, sovereign or for this world? Sovereign. It's the power of the world to come. And by it, we become partakers of the divine nature. And that divine nature that changes us allows us to escape from the unlimited distractions of lust. Amen. Now let's go to Re Revelations 4. I want to show you it one more time. Behold, he cometh with cloud. No, no, Revelation 1, uh, 6, I think, maybe. Did I say 7? I said 6. No, yeah, but I was wrong. <laughs> try, try 6, that doesn't look good. <laughs> I can look it up, Pastor. Let me see if I got it here. Oh, I love your laugh, Mama. One verse nine. Sorry, yeah, nine. Mine, mine bad. Mine, yeah, nine. well, it's a six, <laughs> but it's in obscurity. John, who also am your brother, companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and the patience of Jesus Christ. That word in the Greek. The sovereignty. Peter tells us we can have the divine nature of God in our persons. And John tells us he's a partaker with us in that divine nature. The sovereignty of God in human beings. Because Jesus cut covenant with the Father. We can be partakers of the divine sovereignty. I don't even know if there's any limits to that reality. But we will again conquer the earth and deliver it to Christ and Christ to God. Bill Gates and the devil will not get a shoelace out of this deal. And I told God, I was talking to him, and I said, well, God, it just says you're going to fold it up like an old blouse. Like, what's the big deal? It's my blouse. I'm not giving him a thing. Not even an old blouse. And if you follow the wicked way, if you're a liar and a trick and a deceiver, you won't get anything either. 
The only way you're going to get anything is if you walk in the kingdom in this sovereignty of God. He's holy and pure and clean, truthful. He never lies. Did you know it is impossible for God to lie? Why? Because of his nature. God cannot lie. It's the only thing God cannot do. He cannot lie. What's the first thing that the devil said to even in the, in the garden? God's a liar. Yeah. And if you change the word, you're making God a liar. And it's not God that's a lion. It's you. Your truth, your honesty, sows your future. Your lies and trickery sows your future, shows your future. You are sowing your own harvest. Unbelievable that you carry around inside of you the sovereignty of Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Now, wherever the Spirit of God is present, when the, when the Spirit of God becomes so heavy, so present that everybody in the place can be healed, that's one thing. The other thing is you can get healed by faith anytime if you believe in the covenant. When you look in the covenant and say, hey, Jesus cut the covenant. I can be healed. I, I get it anytime I want it. Just watch what you say and how you say it. Now, I have some news for you, and I... I want to t t tell you, I uh, have decided to move to Uganda. Why? Because I have 1,400 pastors that want to hear this. And wherever I preach the sovereignty of God and te teach like this, in, well, in the four countries that I've done it, every country and all the pastors la landed on their face as God began to minister the truth that they can't fail. <laughs> if you're in the sovereignty of God, you can't fail. God can't fail. We can't fail if we're in Him. Can't fail if you believe the Word. You can't fail. So in Uganda, we're going to have two crusades and one in Kenya. We have 1,400 pastors that I'm going to teach. Uh, well, Len has miracle services. And then when he leaves and goes home, I'm, you can't do it in three services, in three. So I'm going to spend the next six months in Uganda teaching and preaching to the pastors and leaders. I always go to the pastors and leaders. I've been to 17 different pastors and leaders in different countries in the last two years. I've been to 17, influenced 17 nations by the word. Because they, if they'll get it, will influence the army on the ground. Right? Okay. Now, I have enough for myself. I have enough to, to look after myself. But in these countries, uh, in order to teach them, you have to feed them because they don't have enough money to bring food from home. If they bring food from home, they're their wife and children, or their husband and children, depending on who's the pastor, don't eat. So we feed them. They, we bring them in for three days. We feed them. And uh, then we, they, we, we pay for their transportation. And, and then uh, we go from one to another. In, in the next four months, I will travel out to the areas. I'll go to the villages and to the small areas. But in the big crusades, we're bringing them in. So I, I need uh, $28,000. And now, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I was going, going to do is buy a, 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 a Toyota and send it over. But in June, they changed the rules. And if I send a Toyota now, it's 200% tax on it. So that didn't work. <laughs> that dropped my plans back down. So I have, I'll have have $2,000 a month for myself. And, and then uh, the, the other... The other, and I know, yeah, I'm selling my Jeep. I'm going to sell my Jeep. I think I'll get 10000 for it. So then I need another 10000 to actually just make budget. Now, you say, do you want us to give $10,000? No, I don't need it today. 
I need 2800 for this week. But what I do need is for you to promise that you'll send $100 a month for the months that I'm in Uganda so that I can travel. And that's what it's for. Travel expenses there are off the charts. Like when we were there, it was $100 a day because we get a, you get a, you get a cab or an Uber. It takes you to wherever you're going and waits for you and brings you back. You don't let them go. So it's just so, and everything is a whole day. Anyway, so now I'm just asking if you will help. So seed into the kingdom, so seed into Uganda, so seed into what God's asked me to do and become a partner with me. Some of you I've already talked to you about actually giving in that $2,800 so that I can uh, start the advertising for the meetings and stuff that are going to start in the middle of October. And then I'm asking the rest of you if you'll just ask God. Say, God, or maybe you already want to. Maybe you already want to help Uganda. Just say, okay, I'm going to put in an envelope. I promise that I'll give $100 a month as long as Ray's in Uganda. When I get back, you don't, I don't need your hundred dollars a month. I have enough of my own to, to live on. Is that fair? Well, and you know what? Given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaking together. Give with enthusiasm. Say, okay, I'm gonna change I'm gonna help change a nation. That's what that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to help me change a nation. Amen.